Hello and welcome to Aliens Making a Screen Printed Movie Poster, presented by Bubonicon. My name is John. I am an artist based here in Albuquerque, and I will be walking you through my process of uh, concept sketch, illustration, digital separation, and finally the screen printing process to create an Aliens movie poster. This movie screened at the Guild Cinema on August 13th and 14th, 2021. Now with the majority of posters I create, I usually do them uh, in a portrait format. Uh, this one I did in landscape because um, I had kind of an idea of the Queen Alien battling Ripley in the egg chamber and I just thought I had a lot more real estate to work with, uh, you know, for you know, the, the eggs in the background and, and you know, more side, side profile of the Queen Alien and Ripley. Oftentimes I'll start with a rough sketch like this just to get the placement correctly. I should mention that I'm sketching here on a 24HD Cintiq and I'm using the program Clip Studio Paint. Um, I also illustrate on my iPad Pro using Clip Studio Paint as well. I also use Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator. We'll get into that a little bit later. It was important to get the pose of Ripley correctly. Um, I had several versions I worked on until I settled on the right one. Skipping ahead here, we have the blue line illustration. So basically, once everything is drawn, I make the lines blue in Clip Studio. And uh, this really helps me to see the image and it makes it a lot easier to ink on top of as well as I'm adding in all those details. This is a great time-lapse feature that the program offers. Uh, you're looking at hours and hours of illustration sped up to just, you know, a minute or so. I should note that Aliens is by far one of my favorite movies, um, so I was really excited to create this poster. When Bubonicon asked me to uh, to make it, uh, I was very excited. I had done several posters for them in the past, uh, Labyrinth, uh, I think Bill and Ted was my first one, but this one by far is uh, is my favorite. When illustrating for screen printing, you have to keep in mind that um, every line you create has to pass through the screen. In other words, when you burn your stencil, if the line is too thin, that ink can't get pushed through. So um, I have kind of a set point size, and I won't go thinner than that, otherwise you lose those details. So there is definitely a, kind of a different considerations. When, when you're uh, illustrating for, for screen printing that you should be mindful of. Another thing to keep in mind when illustrating digitally like this is you know, with digital, you can zoom in super, super close to get those fine details, but oftentimes those details are going to get lost when it's printed, say, in comics, or in this case, screen printing. So I try to pull back 
a bit and not try to zoom in too close when I'm illustrating. I really went back and forth on what I was going to do for this poster. Um, I think I had like four solid ideas before I landed on this one. Uh, because like I said it's one of my favorite films so I wanted to do it justice um, and it's uh, it's pretty intimidating you know because it's something that I love so much so uh, I use several references um, I have some kind of large action figures I use that for kind of lighting references and the details because you know these aliens have so much details you know in their structure so I wanted to make sure I got the Queen Alien just right and get every detail in there and, and luckily you know I have this kind of massive uh, action figure uh, to, to make sure I got those details correct. Creating likenesses can be very difficult, uh, you know, making a movie poster, you want the character to somewhat look like that actor, so um, reference photos are always best. Um, but I think it's okay sometimes if it doesn't look exactly like them, you know, like in this case, uh, you know it's, it's Ripley and Newt, um, but I don't stress too much on the likeness. Creating the base of the hive here, I wanted it to be a very dark area because I knew this is where my credits and my text were going to go in a reverse white, so you'll see that a little later on. Now we're switching over to Adobe Illustrator. Uh, oftentimes I'll use Illustrator to create uh, vector artwork for, you know, structure in my illustrations, uh, type treatments for movie posters. Um, it's just it's a great tool to uh, to make sure you get all the measurements correctly. Uh, in this instance I'm creating the motion tracker from the movie uh, using a reference photo there at the bottom because I thought it'd be a cool idea to have the motion tracker in the background and then put kind of different scenes in each section. And now we're moving over to Adobe Photoshop, and this is where I add the color and the halftone patterns. Uh, you see there that layer of the halftone patterns of kind of the, the space dust, and then you have the background for the tracker, and then the new illustrations of uh, Pharaoh and the warrior alien, and then, you know, the Marines of Drake and Vasquez and Hicks, and then Facehugger in the tube, and then the power loader next to that. Basically I use Photoshop to prepare the entire poster. Uh, the halftone dots, the way those work is you can have them smaller than 45 lines per inch. So if you have something in your poster that's kind of a gradient or something kind of soft, you use the filter to create the halftones and you can designate you know, how big those halftones are going to be and like I said 45 lines per inch is the way to go. Also in Photoshop. I use it to add in all the, the proper logos and the, the movie credits. Uh, you have the Guild logo, Bubonicon logo, uh, the, the movie logo, the Rated R, and then the studio logo. And in Photoshop you can also um, use it to kind of clean up your illustration. And then finally I added my, my signature there in the corner.
Next we move into the color phase in Photoshop. This is the color of the paper. It's uh, from French paper company. It's called Steel Blue. So I'll start with that color and then put an overlay of, of, of the illustration, of the black layer. Then we have the uh, the darker blue layer, and if you notice, there's halftone dots in Ripley and Newt's pants, so you kind of get like a variation of blue. Next, we have the blue gray. Followed by the white, which also serves as an underlay for the yellow color. And this is important because it's on a darker gray paper, so that yellow can be a little um, muddied up so the white will help that pop more. Now we're zooming into some of the halftone dots that we talked about. And those are 45 line screen. Now I'm changing the opacity on the black to show the color traps. So like with any offset printing you want to trap your color. You see how it's kind of um, overlaying there on the black. That way you don't have that gap in the printing. So if when you're registering your colors and you have a shift, you're not going to get the color of the paper in the background. You're going to want to have that safety area. You can do that in Photoshop. And uh, speaking in pixels, I try to do my traps at between four to seven pixels every time. Now that we're done with the digital preparation, we have these printouts of the separations. Uh, these are printed on an inkjet plotter on Mylar. You see the registration marks there. These are vital to registering the color later on. The next step is to coat the screens with a liquid emulsion. Uh, this can dry over a couple hours. Here you see the mylar separation on top of one of the uh, coated screens. And this is underneath a photo safe light. This is my exposure unit, which uses 12 UV bulbs to burn the stencil into the screen. Uh, here you can see some of my uh, past gig posters and movie posters. Uh, so here is the uh, screen coated with emulsion with the stencil face down. Uh, a sheet of masonite is placed on top to make sure everything is flat. And the exposure unit is turned on. The burn time is about 32 seconds with this unit. After the screen is burned, uh, I take it out in the yard and spray it out with water, and this will reveal the stencil. It also helps to do this during the day on a sunny day because it helps the screen to dry faster and it really, you know, cooks in that stencil to make sure that it's solid. Now the finished dried screen with the stencil. I go in with screen filler and paint in any pinholes because sometimes you have dust in the burning process or particles and you get these little holes. And those will show up sometimes when printing so the screen filler is really handy to fill in all those gaps. Okay, now it's time to mix some color. Uh, this is mixing the blue-gray, so I started with a gray base and added some blue to it. I'm using speedball inks for this project. They are a water-based acrylic ink. Here is what I call ultra blue. Uh, basically, it's the closest you can get to RGB blue on a, on a poster. So it's uh, straight out of the bottle with a little bit of white to make it pop on the gray paper. So now laying down the first color ink, the ultra blue on the screen. And using the squeegee to get that first pass. Um, in screen printing, this is called the flood stroke, and that basically means you're putting ink into the stencil. And then your print stroke is when you pull back. That's the actual print. 
Now we reveal the first color. I should mention that this press is a vacuum press. Essentially it's a giant wooden box with holes in it and there's a shop back in the side and that creates a suction that holds the paper down and that works really great for registration. Next we have the blue gray color and if you notice the screen is really wet there uh, you use a spray bottle to keep it keep it moist um, and that's so that the ink doesn't dry into the into the stencil so you have to kind of keep everything moving quickly because that ink can dry in there and now the second color is revealed it's starting to take shape And now for the third color, white. This particular screen I'm using is a 195 mesh. That just means that the, the openings in the mesh are larger. And you need this for very opaque inks uh, like white that have a lot of pigment in them. Um, otherwise they block up really easily. third color reveal and like I said that white has a lot of pigment so it shows up really uh, brightly on on the gray paper which is nice and next we have the orange yellow color and like I mentioned before that white base is important because uh, this color doesn't have a lot of pigment in it so the gray of the paper can kind of muddy up the vibrancy of that color so having the white underneath is really helpful fourth color reveal those tabs on the side there are used for registration purposes this makes sure that it holds the paper in the correct place as the ink's coming down to make sure all those colors are registered properly Now this is a uh, Speedball Professional Poster Black. It is a great ink right out of the out of the bottle. Uh, it's uh, very silky. It doesn't block up. It's very opaque. So it's one of my favorite inks to use. Now we do the flood stroke to get the ink in the stencil and as we pull back you can start to see the reveal of the illustration. And now the final color. This ink is very wet so uh, you know you have to be careful when you pick up the posters especially towards the end here where there's more ink coverage. Uh, these all go in a drying rack and they will dry anywhere from, depending on the temperature, you know, a minute to, to maybe five minutes per poster. This is a look at some test sheets. Uh, basically it's giant craft paper that I lay down to uh, print the color until it comes through cleanly because you don't want to ruin the good paper that way. Uh, and as you can see over time it starts to collect different colors and different images from different posters so it creates this kind of uh, you know work of art in itself here's a look at some more uh, of the color paper from prior posters and as you can see there's a lot of different colors in there as well and different poster designs Here it looks like uh, some flames from uh, from Dust Till Dawn poster and then a headline from the Dawn of the Dead poster at the top. I like how these kind of all mix together eventually. This is the drying rack. Uh, it holds uh, 50 posters total. 
And like I said, these take anywhere from one to five minutes to dry, depending on the temperature. Here's a look at the finished poster. So this is five colors on French's steel blue paper, hand pulled, screen printed, limited edition of 50. Like I said, this is one of my favorite films, so it was such a pleasure to make and such an honor to create this poster. I hope you all enjoyed watching this process. I know this video can be super long so we did jump around a little bit but I hope you were able to get kind of a gist of the of the process from A to Z on how to create a poster like this. I want to say thank you to everyone for tuning in and thank you to the folks at Bubonicon and the Guild Cinema for this great opportunity. You can find me on the web at johnsanchezcreative.com as my main site. I'm also on social media, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Uh, as well as uh, Twitter and YouTube, and you can access all those through my website. And also, if you have any questions about this process, please feel free to reach out. Uh, thank you. Have a great one.